The Home for the Needy, also known as Internally Displaced Persons Camp at Uhogwa Community in Ovia Northeast Local Government Area of Edo State, is perhaps one of the largest, most populated, and busiest in Nigeria. The IDP camp, which is about 50 kilometers away from Benin City, the Edo State capital, houses over 4,000 population. The camp is situated in a conducive environment. The setting and topography of the area provided an alluring ambience and habitat for the settlers. The Home for the Needy, Uhogwa was founded in 1992 by Pastor Solomon Abumeri Polonsha. Since its establishment, the center has grown to become a community of its own. A visit to the settlement by our news crew was an adventure of sorts. Our arrival was not only greeted by the serenity of the environment, but also the cacophonies of sounds emanating from different activities that the children were engaging in in that hour of the day. While some were sighted in clusters, discussing and playing, our attention was arrested by the football game where the children were displaying beautiful football artistry to the admiration of the spectators. Everywhere in the camp seems to be bubbling with different sporting activities as we saw different sets sighted playing basketball, netball, volleyball to the cheering of the crowd. <laughs> The bubbly social activities in the camp make the settlement quite lively for the inhabitants, especially the children. Beyond these activities, life in the camp is quite challenging as the children have to grapple with the scarce resources available to survive. Getting two square meals a day is perhaps a luxury in the face of the rising economic hardship in the country. However, through prudence, the management has been able to keep their bodies and souls together. The camp kitchen seemed busy for children as they were seen engaging in different chores. Our camera lenses also captured the lineup of plates in preparation for food service. I mean, this situation was an emergence of a hero, Amos Ishaku, a first class graduate of chemical engineering from Edo State University, Uzari, who backed a PhD scholarship to the University of Illinois in the United States. Amos Ishaku hid from Kugile community in Goza local government area of Borno State. He was born on the 20th of March 1996. He attended Sabogari Primary School between 2003 and 2009. On graduation, he proceeded to Government Day Secondary School in Goshe the same year. He was in the school until 2012 when Boko Haram invaded their community, which prompted him to flee as he lost touch with his family during the bombardment. He later made his way to Edo State and subsequently found his way to IDP camp where he completed his secondary school education after serious mentorship and tutorship. His story to stardom is quite revealing and inspiring and he has this to say. Me, I am a proof of someone that lost hope, someone that lost dream, someone that was, you know, hopelessness. I was just to the zero level because my first encounter with Boko Haram was back in 2012. I was in secondary school when they attacked us and that was the end of my education. I dropped out of school and since then I couldn't go back to school. I have to see how I can survive running from one village to another city to another city, state to another state. Until 2014, I found myself here and uh, I started here from SS2 on that tree. There was no class. I remember I had only two notebooks and I saw a sack bag where I could keep my book. So it was really a tough time. But my joy was coming here was not basically for me to come to, to schooling. Where I, I, my first time, my first thing was, okay, let me come here where I can at least be able to sleep. I won't hear all these kind of gunshots. I won't hear all this kind of, you know, bombing and the rest. So because of the trauma that I passed through, it was not difficult for me to, you know, catch up in the school. If I would have not been committed to the leadership of Home for Needy Foundation, I don't think I would have gone back to school because the first thing I told them, I don't want to go to school. My one is let me eat, at least I can sleep. But they encouraged me, they, you know, they loved me. They kept telling me that, okay, the dreams I had then, when everything was okay, the goals I had in my mind, I can still actualize them. So it's just for me 
to try to forget everything and put my head in school. And that is what I did. And that is what all of us are doing here. The founder and chief coordinator of the Home for the Needy, Pastor Oloron Shaw, shared his thoughts on the development. We have great talents here in every field. Everything Nigeria needs is here. Yes, in all the fields. So we are celebrating. Uh, the news just came at a good time when we were just battling, you know, to have food and all the challenges. So, and then we never knew that a group in the U.S. called Boam Tempest Institute have been documenting all the reports you people have been carrying the reports, you know, you know, and they've committed themselves to say, okay, what's going to be our contribution? We are going to help these children. Hence they love education. They, they want, you know, they don't want to be among those who have given up in life, going to criminality, but they want to study, they want to come back and do something in the country. So they decided, okay, they are going to help us to be contacting universities, offering scholarship, and they reach out and with all the report they gathered about us, they started with him and gave him a wonderful scholarship. And I'm so happy about it because he's going to be studying at PhD level and he's going to be working with the teaching staff. So the school is going to be taking care of him. So he's a great inspiration now to the young ones that are here. And I, I wish you come to see in the evenings, in the mornings, and see how they are reading. You see, everywhere is a bit quiet, apart from those playing football. The rest are in their houses, they are all reading. Everybody wants to be, be somebody, you know, they just want to be somebody. They now discover that, yes, you should not give up to how the society or the world try to paint you or push you to a corner, push you to a situation whereby you think, okay, all that is left for you is just to quit or go into other vices. So I'm so happy. We are, I'm celebrating and everybody is celebrating. He also highlighted the challenges confronted them in the camp. The need here is great. Come and give us toilet, give us water, you know, give us better houses, give us mattresses, give us soap. The children don't have to uh, toilet to even clean their body, even when they bathe. They don't have toothpaste and toothbrush. They don't, they don't have soap to bathe and wash. So there are a lot of things the guests need sanitary pad and above all food. Then come and offer scholarship to the children. We have over 200 who are studying. A lot of them are graduating this year. We're going to have medical doctors. We're already having lawyers. More are coming out. And then we have over 150 who just did jam and they are pushing to go. And if you see their jam score, 290, something, 200, something, 300 and something. So what do you want us to do with these people? They just need your little encouragement. Pay their fees, buy their books, mm -hmm. pay their hostel fee, and that's all. Just help them eat, and then you have a better world and a better nation. So we need everybody to join hands to support them. Since the Home for the Needy came on stream in 1992 and received its first intake the same year, it has gone on to flourish by working in tandem with its mission despite the daunting challenges. The mission of the center, among other things, is to provide a home for the needy in the society who includes orphans, street children, children from broken homes, children from poor families, windows, internally displaced persons, and refugees. As a corollary to the mission's statements. The center has focused on raising a community of people with sound moral and capacity. This cascades down to offering psychosocial support to victims of abuse and violence with a view to helping them overcome trauma and other mental health issues. Since the Home for the Needy was established in 1992, it has recorded tremendous progress across board. The center currently has 4,393 occupants which spread across orphan, windows, internally displaced persons, among others, drawn from Edo, Deta, Ondo, Bonu, Adamawa, Yobe, Kebi, Kaduna, Benue, Niger, Bauchi, Plateau, Taraba, and Kogi states. A cross section of the children shared with us their pathetic stories that brought them to the camp. I came here, but it was so kind of tough for me, first of all, because I left school ever since. So when I came here, it was so tough to pick up, to cope again. It was so tough for me, but with the encouragement of our pastor, our caregivers, in fact, God really, really helped me and I was able to pick up and now I'm in school. And I came here as a result of the insurgency that took place in our own side because when the, those terrorists enter our side, they chase everybody, kill some of our loved ones, um, burnt our everything, carry, every, carry, carry our belongings. And we were running helter-skelter, finding for a place where we can have a rest. So after we ran, from Goza to Cameroon. 
Then after spending some time in Cameroon, then I found myself in Yola. Then from then I moved down to Jos, from Jos to this place. So that's where I now I was able to have peace of mind. So when I came here, so my intention of coming here was let me come and have peace of mind and all of that. Before coming here, I was working on, on the street, working for 100 naira, 200 naira a day, at least see what I will eat. And that was how, that's how I said, if, if I should tell you the story, one day will not be enough, so I'm just trying to like compress the whole thing. When I left, I was on my own, just looking for where I would get 200, 300 a day, then we'll eat for that day, that's we'll sleep. And of course, even despite that, uh, you will be sleeping here, you see another bomb not far from you, BOOM! Two, three bombs again. You now have to not relocate again, change place. So that was how we've been for almost a year before I, before we got to, to know about this um, this foundation. Okay. Yes. We, got to know about we were having a happy family living. So fortunately, we just see that we just hear gunshot everywhere. Everybody just scattered. We don't know. Who is who? We went, we just scattered different places, living without our parents. We even lost many of our relatives in the teen stage. So life has just been like there is no hope. I feel I was just like thinking, okay, when will now be my turn? Because I was not even having any hope of living again because of the way the things were happening. It's been a tough thing for me because. It is for me, finding myself here, it was just like a dream because since, I, I've, uh, since when around 2012 that, I, that this incident happened, instead of incidents of Boko Haram's issues, since that day I, I lost hope of any of anything. I've, I've never gone to school again because since that time I was in JSS1 then. So from that time, I could not able to go to school. And this is all was in my mind was just to have a conducive environment and where I can just sit down, have something to eat and like that. So the camp, which started barely as a unit, has expanded to become a full settlement of its own with some basic amenities. The center, with the collaboration of generous individuals and organizations, now boasts of several house units, a primary health care center, a church, primary and secondary schools, among other basic amenities. The RDP camp also boasts of large expanse of farmland, which spans over 80 hectares. This is part of efforts to provide food for its teeming population. They are farmland houses different food crops such as pineapple, cassava, yam, corn, plantain, watermelon, cucumber, pawpaw, and all kinds of vegetables. Our crew was thrilled by what we saw at the farm, so I decided to join two of the campers to clear a portion of the yam plantation. Alright, I came here with a pen and of course I have to be forced to join the campers here uh, to ensure that this uh, uh, yam plantation is cleared. So of course as a village boy, I trust in justice, so I know how to work very well. So join me as I finish this um, line. Ah. Ah. Apart from crops farming, they also engage in livestock farming where they rear cows, goats, chicken, and fish. The cattle ranch is a sight to behold. Apart from serving as a source of food, the farming also generates income for them. Amid this, the people are, however, facing dire challenges of electricity and acute shortage of water. Though electricity pole and transformer facilitated by member representing Obia Federal constituency, Honorable Dennis Idaosa, have been installed in the camp. They are yet to be connected connected to the national grid. As for the water, the boreholes in the camp are not fully functional, thus begging for reactivation. Apart from the aforementioned, the children in the camp are also confronted with educational materials. Their school lacks basic furniture such as marker boards, shortage of chairs and desks, as well as classroom. This is visible in this classroom where the students were seen standing to take lectures, while others compress themselves to sit in the limited chairs and table. Take out your jam and complain, complain to us on that day so that all of us can all of us live together. Is that taking? Yes! Yeah. The teacher is not also finding it easy to write on the ricketing marker board. The situation is the same with the primary session. Uh, 
equally the campus are also confronted with the accommodation problem our inspection of one of the female hostel was the revelation of their pathetic plight The management is thankful to the UK-based organization for building an ultra-modern female hostel. Well, more of this gesture is sought to address this concern. Another major challenge that the people are grappling with is healthcare services. The only head post in the environment has limited spaces to accommodate patients. Other enabling instruments such as equipment and drugs are in short supply. After taking us around the facility, the residents now speak more on their plight and my experience. Apart from treating minor ailments, we emphasize preventive health. And when you talk about preventive, I mean you want to prevent disease. For you to be able to prevent disease, there are so many things that needs to be. Over the years, eh, we've had problems with drug refill. When I mean drug refill, drugs that we have here for the number of patients we attend to in this place is usually not enough. You know? Because in a month, we can have as much as 200 people that have, over 200, I take an average of 200, that have had malaria in a month, you know? To get drugs to treat 200 people with malaria is, is, is a lot. So basically, we, we, from time to time, we're always having shortage of, shortage of drugs, you know? But for some time, we had some drugs, you know, available to a large extent, we had enough for some time, you know, but drugs are always what we need. Drugs are always what we need from time to time. And another thing they need in this health facility is space. Yeah, we have issue of space. You know, when I was taking you around, I took you to a room there. You saw somebody attending to a patient, telling her to take this drug. And that same room, Somebody will come and we need to do a dressing, maybe a wound dressing, somebody that has injury in the leg or hand, you see doing dressing there. And that same place we have drugs in our chefs there. Under normal circumstances and in a normal setting, normal primary health care setting, it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be a place specifically for drugs. Another place, a consulting room where you can consult, see your patient, attend to your patient, and all that. But in this place, they don't have enough space. So, it's a place they will need space. Our attention was also captured by a practicing student doctor at the camp who happens to be a product of the IDP camp. He shared his story and his experience with us. I'm a victim of Boko Haram. The insurgency that is currently going on in the northern eastern part of this country specifically Boru State. So I came here early 2014. I was displaced from my parents, from my hometown. I, my parents I left me. I was actually in a school somewhere in uh, Adamawa State. So they run away to for refuge. They settled in Cameroon, so I was, I was left alone in Nigeria. So, but Along the line, when I was in school, the program kept uh, attacking the places I was. So I found myself on the street, just to cut the um, story short. I came to Abuja, hawking, where I was just hawking to earn money to better for myself until um, early 2014 when I heard about this um, home, Home for the Needy for uh, Foundation. So I came here. I was welcomed and well received. I started school. I was I actually came here just for okay to find a way to settle down and have a peaceful mind. But they welcomed me here and I started schooling. Started from the um, junior secondary school, then started my SS3. I wrote my work, wrote my work and got admission to study personal surgery in the State University. And uh, I started the program. The program was tough, you know. So God, with the help of God and the one for the lady, I was able to write numbers of exam, MB on MB. God helped me. I passed all. And finally, last week, I passed my at four MB. Yes. Wow.
One of the matrons succinctly highlighted their plights yes, in the camp for and the called for assistance. It's for over 3,000 IDPs. Yes, people that were displaced by the Boko Haram insurgents and uh, people displaced by bandits also. They are here. Vulnerable people, four kind widows, and all sorts. And uh, here, we provide them with shelter, with food, education, with uh, health uh, materials also. A lot of challenges taking care of them. And uh, one of them, the critical, one of the critical challenges in the area of feeding. So I'm talking to you now, they've not taken their breakfast because we, we cook what we have and uh, you know, we, we really want people to come support by providing food stuff of all kinds. Food companies, individuals, NGOs, government at all levels, even the international community. They should come and support us because a child that is not well fed, it doesn't have immunity against diseases and all this stuff. So we always want them to eat well. And that's why even there are times they might not be full. We have to go. We have customers who buy things on credit to make sure that these children eat. So we are calling on you right there. Here, nothing is too small to give and nothing is too big to give. Please come support these children by always providing food for them. And also in the area of education, we have over 200 children in various universities in Nigeria. They need scholarship to be able to achieve their academic goals. You know, see what they went through. Some saw their parents slaughtered. A lot of horrible things. They were highly traumatized. They've come out of trauma. And then they want to read. They want to go to school because of the encouragement we are giving to them. At this point, it will not be good for them to just cut off, me cut short the academic goals, not being able to attain to where they want to get to academically. During the guided tour, our crew also observed some abandoned projects in the camp, such as the poultry farm and the grass cutter breeding center, which are begging for attention. The center, in spite of the scarcity of resources and other limitations, has made its marks in many fairs. In education, the center has facilitated pioneer classes for 438 campers who never had the privilege of receiving formal education in the past. Equally, the center has provided primary and secondary school education for 3,000 children. The center has produced 82 higher institution graduates in disciplines such as nursing, midwifery, engineering, law, pharmacy, accounting, public administration, computer science, international relations and diplomacy, mass communication, among others. The center has over 300 university students. These are some of our over 200 university students. Some of them are on holiday, some have just graduated, and others are in school. Some will still go back to school, some will still go back to law school. So you can see them with their beautiful smile. These are children you've been helping, you've been supporting. These are children that started from nowhere, from nothing, and today, Ashes is becoming beautiful. The center has partnered with different national and international bodies to achieve some of its giant strides. For example, it has collaborated with Wells Mountain Foundation, USA, Futura Foundation, Germany, and Community Sports Education Development, United Kingdom, to provide scholarship for 21 students studying medicine and surgery, among others, in various universities across the country and beyond, to enhance the children's social and physical skills as well as their mental well being. The management collaborated with Community Sport Education Development in United Kingdom to set up the first netball court in Nigeria with trained coaches. Equally, the collaboration also bettered the setting of the handball, volleyball, and badminton courts in the camp. The center's collaboration with Access to Success Organization in the United States brought about the setting up of basketball courts. As can be seen here, the children are having a feed day enjoying these facilities to display their dexterity in basketball basketball, netball, and volleyball games to the chairs of the spectators. <laughs> the 
The foundation also collaborated with Nigeria Cricket Federation to train a cricket team that has been partaking in various competitions. The center is constantly participating in sporting events with other neighboring schools in the area. In the face of the changing world that is skills demanding, the center is now resting on its oars to empower the children and widows with relevant skills. This is expressed in the collaboration with GIZ Company in Germany, which led to the establishment of a fish farm in the camp. The partnership also resulted in cosmetology training and other entrepreneurship programs. The collaboration of the center with Abiola Organization in Germany led to the establishment of a computer training center in the camp. A United States-based company, Pathfinder Justice Initiative, has also provided the center with catering services. Collaboration with other generous organizations has led to the establishment of tailoring shops, plumbing skills, among others. Our news crew visited the tailoring training section to observe the activities. Home for the needy is indeed a place in trees.